Good morning, everybody. Nikki Burnett here, Taste Life Nutrition. This is Taste Life Nutrition Radio, streaming live on KUHSDenver.com, um, where we are now hitting 170,000 people, which is cool stuff. So good times, uh, having a great time. And you can see today is just me. So um, I get super excited about it being just me. I mean, I love my guests. I have amazing guests, but sometimes I want to talk about what I want to talk about. So, um, you know, what is first, of course, what is Taste Life Nutrition Radio? Uh, we are here to do our best to bring you um, all of the goodness that is life. And I say that, you know, health is important. My, 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 passion, my love, my excitement is all about health and wellness and nutrition and, you know, creating this healthy lifestyle so that we can live this amazing big life that we're here and intended to live. That's why we're here. That's why we're created. We're here to, to give and to serve and to build and to grow and expand and all of these amazing things that um, we're here to do. And when we don't feel well, when maybe our relationships are not doing well, whether if we're financially unstable, if there are things going on um, that interfere with our health, then it can, uh, it can create some struggle. And so what I want to bring to you, what is, what I, what I believe to be the best source of information uh, to the best of my ability by bringing um, you know my knowledge as well as the experts who I bring in in their in their worlds um, and all that they have to offer and to give so but today's just me and so I get it super excited about it um, but as always we start the show with gratitude um, I am grateful today for the ability to to create and that's what i think that it is you know i was i was uh working through my gratitude this morning and you know my visualization and that kind of thing and what i know is we have um in us the ability to create all of the things that we want to do whatever that looks like and i am uh so one of the things so in my promo this morning for the show I was talking about my, my, my word of the year for this year has been growth. Um, I still have my bracelet, it says growth, my other one fell off, but <laughs> my, and, and that's exactly what has happened this year, is I have grown, um, and I've grown professionally, I've grown personally, I've grown in my spiritual relationship with Christ, and, and just continue to build, I've grown in my relationships with family and friends and and with clients and I've learned I've learned so much and I'm looking forward to what's next year but but as a a partner in this creator and I call myself a partner because I believe I partner with God in creating what it is that I'm here to do um, I am grateful to be uh, that partner in in the creation and in all that is coming out of my world and of course out of Taste Life Nutrition. Uh, so many good things to come and I'm stoked. So stay tuned about that because we're gonna, we're gonna have some fun. But um, you know, as we move into the show today, uh, if, you, if, you, if you watch the show on a regular basis, you've heard me start to talk about soulful conception and what does that mean? And so I wanna give a little bit of history on on where that comes from and my why behind it because it is in my in my mind it's really big um, and some sometimes it's it's so big that it kind of sets me back a little bit and I think holy smokes you know what are we what what are we doing but it is this amazing big picture view of what soulful conception is and what it is that we can be and then bringing the power back to each of us as individuals when it comes to the creation of life and the creation of our future. And so, um, you know, I talk about how I've grown over the last year. Um, 
you know, what I've realized in my career is what I love, there, there are things that have, that have been kind of these aha moments for me. And, you know, I, I've always been, you know, super science nerd, but um, the realization of being a nutritionist and that I was actually going to do that and move forward into it was this, this amazing, no question about it, this is what we're going to do, even if it's this midlife change, this is what we're doing, and this is what we love, and we're getting out of corporate America, and we're going to go uh, full speed ahead. And, you know, I love looking back at at that moment, literally the moment that I had that 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 aha moment, that change, that that you know, that gift, that awakening, whatever you want to call it, to know what it is that I'm going to do. Um, I would say another moment that it, you know, when I look back, was the realization of what food is, and I talk about this a lot, but I think it's really important to to understand. You know, when we have these these relationships with food that can be really a struggle sometimes. You know, some of us don't understand why does food hurt me? Why do I get bloated? Why do I feel bad after I eat? And some people are like, I love the food so much, I'm just going to eat it and eat it and eat it, and I don't care what it is. And, and then, you know, some of us are, you know, fairly balanced when it comes to our food. But if we take a step back, Let's take a step back away from the relationship we have with food, the way that we look at food um, every day as it sits on our plate or was after, after, you know, after, as we have to think about cooking it. And let's, let's take a step back and look at what it actually is. Food is a language. Food is the key or one of the, one of the few keys um, to allowing the body to work properly. It literally, as it breaks down, it tells our body what to do. And so the, the nutrients and the micronutrients and the amino acids and all of the things within uh, food, as it breaks down, hopefully it's breaking down properly, right? That's always my job is to discern whether you're breaking your food down properly so you can get the nutrients. It's a whole other, <laughs> other topic altogether. But as it breaks down and we utilize those nutrients, it literally is talking to our cells and to our DNA and telling it how to express, telling our DNA how to express, telling our genes how to express, telling our cells how to work, how to function, our hormones, how to communicate with the rest of the body. It's this amazing, beautiful, uh, methodical fashion that that food uh, uh, and how it works in allowing us to function on a normal basis every single day and so if we're eating food that is good and clean and healthy then we have this good clean healthy line of communication to ourselves and to our DNA and it allows us to function properly right we have a clear head we have a clear mind we're able to focus and work and again going back to that build and grow and serve and do all of these things that we're put here to do but if we're eating food that is full of chemicals and preservatives it's full of glyphosate which is roundup which we now know and we most of us have known for a long time is a nasty carcinogen um, if we're eating food that is you know this processed food, the fast food, these things that, that I don't, can we call it food? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, some of it I would not call food for sure. The body though, then the, the nutrients within that are lacking, it's not nutrient dense. And so what it then creates is this really broken line of communication to our cells and to our DNA. And so what happens? Well, oh, you know, we have these amazing redundancies in our body, right? So something's not working properly, well, it'll go over here, or it'll go over here. But over time, and as we age, those redundancies are gonna get worn out. So, you know, we have um, things, you know, we have pains and symptoms and dis disease or dis-ease. We have these, these, these problems that come up that so often we're blaming it on just bad luck or genetics or age or whatever the case may be when really the most amazing thing about this is that it, it is entirely maybe 95% on us 
it is on me to consider what I'm putting in my body, what I'm putting on my body, on my skin, in my hair, what I'm putting in my environment. And when I say that, I'm talking about you know garden uh, uh, chemicals. Let's not put chemicals in our garden. I'm talking about the things we clean our homes with. I'm talking about the things we wash our, our clothes with and our sheets. Um, and all of these things that have the ability to really interfere or add to our health. And so that was, so um, the, the, the understanding of food as I, as I started to move through my nutrition study, so I studied it for 20 plus years and then decided to go to school for it. Um, but as I moved through it and having this realization of what food actually is, what it does, and, and, and you know, taking the, the mental emotional out of food and, and putting in the biochemistry of food was this amazing, amazing moment for me. And then to add on top of that, sort of this third piece that I, uh, that, that I had this realization of that I kind of hit on already just, just now is the epigenetic component. And the epigenetic component, if you don't know what that is, um, it's, it is the fairly new study, but uh, to, to break it down, we have our genetics. And, and we, typically we look at our genetics as, you know, um, how tall we are or uh, how, what color our hair is, although it can change, we know. Um, you know, things like that, things that typically don't change, our eye color. Those are the things that are, that are genetics. But epigenetics are locations on top of our genes. They're variants that have the ability to turn on and off. And the best thing, the coolest thing in the world is what can turn our genes on and off is everything that's in our lifestyle. So it's food, it's stress or, or mitigation of stress, it's sleep, uh, it's, uh, or not enough sleep, it's movement, too much or too little. Yes, we can move too much. You have, we've got a lot of you know, really, really super athletes out there who work a lot, work really hard, and they're that type A athlete, elite athlete, and it can be a problem if our bodies can't handle it. Um, what else? It's uh, toxicants in our air, toxicants in our food. It's um, exposures to, to toxicants, to mycotoxins, to heavy metals. All of these things that are in our environment that for the most part, we have full control over. And it was that, that, that piece of it that we, we literally can't sit back and say, it's not my fault. I mean, it's a big deal. It's a big deal because so we may have the potential for something in our epigenome, right? We have the potential for cardiovascular disease. We have the potential for autoimmune disease. We have the potential for, uh, you know, you name it, cancer. But, but have we taken care of ourselves in a manner that doesn't allow it to express? Because we have a huge amount of control over that. And it's beautiful, but it also is, it can be hard. There's a lot of accountability there, right? And so taking that into account and those three things that have sort of molded and shaped my world as a functional nutritionist and as I run labs and work with clients and as I, as, as I build this company and as I build onto what it is that I do, um, this, is, this is sort of my motivator. All of these things are my motivators and the things that I love to talk about and that, that I want people to hear and I think need to hear. Um, and I think that we all need to hear that we are accountable for our actions and for what we do. Um, and nobody's perfect. I am certainly not perfect. We are still all human. But having the knowledge is key. And I think it's so, so important. And so all of this comes back to sort of a pretty bow um, when, you know, m most of my client base is GI dysfunction, so the bloating, the um, the discomfort, the pain, you know, and which can lead to brain fog, which can lead to joint pain and disease, which then can lead to autoimmune disease. So I see a lot of uh, clients with autoimmune conditions. I also see some other things, a lot of hormonal imbalances. I have a lot of fertility clients. 
But all of this has come to what I now have brought, you know, sort of am starting to create, which is soulful conception. So that doesn't mean that I'm moving away from the autoimmune disease and the GI dysfunction because it's all related. It all comes together. When I have clients, uh, particularly women, uh, but you know, they, they have their, their husbands who are, who are on board as well, but when I have clients who come to me who are, are struggling with, with fertility issues or say, I've got these issues and I know at some point I want to get pregnant, you know, it's still, it's the same issues. It's GI dysfunction. It's autoimmune disease. It's, you know, it's these pains and symptoms. And, and it's, it's, it's when you're in the middle of it, it often is hard to, 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 to be on the inside looking in. You've got to be on the outside looking in, which of course is my job is being on the outside looking in and then as the functional nutritionist running the labs looking at lifestyle again being the outside looking in um from from you know however far away and as i'm as i'm you know looking at an intake and looking at the forms and looking at you know timelines because i super side note but super cool stuff is as we're talking about epigenetics, we can look, I have um, timelines that are built out and created through the software that I use called the Living Matrix, super cool stuff. Um, but it builds out a timeline from prior to birth until uh, the day they, my client comes to see me. And so what can happen, which is so fun, is someone starts to experience symptoms and can't figure it out. But if we look at a timeline, and we see there was a trauma or an accident or a breakup or you name it, what happens? This is one of those things that can turn genes on and off. And so we have a traumatic event, certain genes turn on that maybe we don't want turned on, but they, they start to express and what happens? We start to have symptoms, we start to have uh, maybe GI symptoms or mental and emotional symptoms, you know, depression, anxiety. We start to have, uh, you know, we can lead to, you know, more GI dysfunction and disease and then, you know, the, the, it goes on and on. But very often we can look at this timeline and we go, so what happened? <laughs> you know, and we talk about it and it, it allows us then to start to move forward in the process. And oftentimes we want to, and I say this all the time, bring on a team because sometimes we need to talk through that. Um, and uh, my job is not to be the therapist, my job is to be, you know, the biochemistry nerd and talk about the biochemistry, but um, we also have to work on the mental emotional, which is so important in the f in, 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 in fertility, in trying to get pregnant, in carrying a healthy, vibrant baby in pregnancy, right? So, um, let's see, where do I want to go from here? So many things to talk about. So in, in creating soulful conception, my goal with this is to, is again, to bring this all together um, and continue doing the, the, the things that I love, but to take it and move, move into some of the, a little more targeted with the, the, the men and women who are looking to have a family, whether they're looking you know 10 years out or they might be struggling right now and going through you know, fertility treatments and, and that kind of thing. Uh, because these are the things, as far as soulful conception is concerned, these are the things that are important to, um, to creating that healthy future. And so it's back that up just a little bit and you know, showing, you'll see how it all comes together if you don't already, I mean, you probably do, but when we look at um, creating a healthy body. So a woman comes to me, I say a woman, I work mostly with women, it's just the way that it goes. But it is, it's, it's crucially important to understand that when it comes to conception, men are also involved. Men need to be healthy as well. I see men, I see couples, so this is not just a woman's thing. Um, but as a woman and knowing how women are, it's just how it works. Anyway, point to all of that is that my goal is to see women in this place where they are starting to work through the process of getting pregnant. 
And when I say that, I you know, it could take it could take a month, it could take a year to truly, or it could take longer. You know, who really knows, right? But to truly get a body to where you feel good, you're healthy, your labs look good, you you're, you're normal. Um, you know, if there is autoimmune uh, disease, that we do our best to put it into remission because pregnancy makes autoimmune disease go haywire. Um, actually, it will dampen it, and then after birth, it will go haywire. Um, it's just the way the immune system works. But, but going into pregnancy as healthy as possible, feeling good, having energy, uh, not having the joint pain, not having GI pain, not having bloating, all of these things allow the body then to focus on getting pregnant, carrying a healthy pregnancy, having a healthy normal delivery, and then having a healthy successful child, and having healthy successful great, 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 great grandchildren. So to put this into perspective, your health today affects seven generations ahead is what the data shows. So if you are super healthy, you have an impact, or if you're not super healthy, you have an impact on our future. And so this is what gets me just super nerdy is the fact that anybody who I work with who's working on getting pregnant, that one person, that single person has the ability to change the trajectory of our health. I mean, how amazing is that? That is the coolest thing because what we're seeing right now is our health is declining. We have so much knowledge, so much information, so much bad information. <laughs> um, and we have, we have, you know, all of, all of this connection and we learn and there's, you know, we have way too much information, really, I, I say that. We never have too much information. We never ever have too much information. But we want to make sure it's good information. But with all of that being said, we still are on the decline. Why is that? I think there are a lot of reasons for it and probably not something that I'm gonna get into right now. But understanding that, you know, prior to some point, prior to this most recent industrial revolution, um, we, our food is changing. You know, we have genetically modified food, not a good thing. You can fight me on that all day long, but the body has a hard time recognizing something that's not normal and natural. It is genetically modified. It is not created by God or whoever you think you're, the creator is, but it's, you know, not created by God. And the body understands what is created and what is normal and natural. And when it's not allowed, when it's when it's when something is not natural to it, it's going to fight back. It's just the way that it goes. Um, and so then we have more herbicides, more pesticides. We have more chemicals. We've got thousands of chemicals in our in our food and in our in our body care products and and all of these things that have never been tested, right? And then we, we have to go out and shop and look for natural, which is bogus, and or all natural, totally bogus. And we keep, you know, what they call greenwashing, um, our, you know, all of our food and our products and our body care when, you know, taking it back to basics. That's so much of what it's all about is taking it the best we can, taking it back to basics, getting rid of the chemicals, knowing what's in your food, you know, these are the things that are going to help to create a healthy body, even if you're past the point to where you want to have a family, which I am. Um, but these are the things that are going to help to create a healthy body. So, so your future, if you are not looking to grow your family, um, you are living for as long as you live. Nobody knows how long that they have to live, right? I have no idea. But... The quality of that time that I'm here, I'm up, I'm walking, I'm exercising, I am doing and I'm going and I'm seeing and I'm experiencing and, I'm, and, and all of these things that are so important to, to living a life of, of, of joy and creativity. Um, and so then for those who are looking to expand their family, taking out all of these 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 
these things that can be so so damaging um, is, you know is is what is going to help to change the trajectory of our future and so you know we have you know going beyond the the chemicals and the genetically modified foods and these things that we're doing to destroy our food um, is you know how we politicize food and I mean, a lot of people are past this but I'm going to tell you you know so sorry talking things like fat fat and carbohydrates <laughs> specifically fat and so you know I, I think you know for the most part a lot of people are beyond the point of thinking the fat is unhealthy now some fat is unhealthy and we'll, we'll get into that a little bit but I had a I had a client last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was, um, who came to me and we we're talking and I was telling her, you know, the things that are good and healthy to eat. She'd been avoiding eggs because high cholesterol. Cholesterol in your food has very little impact on your serum cholesterol. Eat eggs. If you're not sensitive to them, eat eggs. Lots and lots and lots of people are sensitive to eggs. So um, you know, you are an individual and you need your individual care taken care of um, but to be afraid of food and especially fat when fat is the cornerstone of our hormones of our brain health of our cell cellular integrity um, we have to have fat genetically or epigenetically some of us need more some of us need less right and we don't know that unless we test our you know look into our you know nutrigenomics which I love to do, it's super fun. I've look, looked at my own, I'm a lower fat, lower protein genotype. It's just the way that it goes. My husband is a high fat, high protein, and it shows. <laughs> so, quick side note, he, I had him go, uh, we're just doing a, a detox, and sometimes if you do vegan for a very short period of time, it can be therapeutic. It also take a little, uh, a little um, uh, stress off of the liver as you're going through a detox. So we did a, a vegan, uh, veganism vegan diet essentially for a week I'm fine with it I know that I don't want it long term I know it's not healthy long term but my husband flipped out <laughs> it was amazing so knowing this about people and knowing this about yourself whether you do it in testing or whether you just know it about yourself is important and so eat fat eat good healthy fat fat is so important for carrying a healthy pregnancy it's f important for you as the individual Eat, don't eat seed fats so or seed oils and so seed oils and this is going to be maybe a surprise to some of you I'm hoping that it's no longer a surprise but so many people still don't know this that I am encountering canola oil we are told that canola oil is a healthy oil and what I need for you to know right now is that if it's in your cabinet throw it away I don't like wasting money but I'm going to tell you that if there's something that's damaging and detrimental and inflammatory to your health and to your pregnancy and to your family and to future generations it's things like seed oils like canola oil throw it away don't finish it don't even ever look at it again <laughs> so but you know you get sunflower and safflower seeds um, you know these grape seed even you know I was talking with someone yesterday about grape seed oil and you know it's probably it's not probably as bad as canola oil but I just tend to stay away from all seed oils for the most part not entirely but you know think about avocado oil for cooking coconut oil for cooking uh, olive oil for putting on your don't cook with olive oil uh, for putting on your food but eat fat eat a lot of good healthy fat it is very very important um, real quick and I want to say this as far as I'm a little bit all over the place but I can't help it because it's fun for me it's my show just kidding <laughs> um, is when we're talking about um, cholesterol and what actually raises cholesterol it's not fat it's not eggs uh, well it is some fat it's unhealthy fats so canola oil can raise cholesterol it's hard on the liver can raise cholesterol um, sugar simple carbohydrates bread pasta you know your regular you know whole grain breads if you eat a bunch of bread you eat a bunch of pasta those are things that can raise cholesterol so look at your diet first don't look at the eggs don't look at the healthy fats don't do a low fat diet um, but do take into consider consideration what it is that you're eating as far as 
the amount of sugar, the amount of processed fats, um, and uh, you know the the trans fats and um, uh, the margarine and, and trash like that. Those are the things that will raise cholesterol and create problems. It's inflammatory. Cholesterol, elevated cholesterol, is a problem when your body is inflamed. Okay, listen to what I'm saying. Elevated cholesterol may not necessarily be a problem if your body's not inflamed. And so this is why we want to, to run labs, understand as best as possible the way the body's functioning, how it's functioning, where is the inflammation, what's creating the inflammation, if there's inflammation, and then how to squash that inflammation. So then um, we don't have to worry about these, these, this, this dysfunction that's happening because it's the inflammation that is creating the dysfunction. We got to know why that there's inflammation, though. So that's what's that's what's really important. And so when we're looking at, um, you know, pregnancy, if there's inflammation, or you know, whether it's pregnancy or you know, a, a, a man's fertility, if there's inflammation, if there's some kind of immune response, inflammatory response for, you know, from whatever reason, could it be the food you're eating? Could it be what's on your what you're putting on your skin? The deodorant, the, the the stuff you're washing your hair with, could there have been mycotoxin mold exposure in your history? Um, are you in an area where it's high in heavy metals? I mean, we can go on and on and on, but that's why we want to dig. That's why we want to learn and understand the body and, and and what's going on. Because yes, there may be inflammation. Never stop asking why. Always ask why, because you can go deeper and deeper and deeper. And the more I learn, the more I learn, the deeper we can go. Uh, which is amazing and which is you know sort of why I nerd out and nerd out on what I can do or, or on what I do because I I we want to get to that root cause um, and sometimes it goes deeper than we even think it does so addressing inflammation when we're looking to to address fertility whether you're struggling or not struggling um, addressing inflammation is is it the number one? Yeah, probably so. Yeah, <laughs> we gotta we gotta we have to address inflammation, but again, understand where it comes from, which could mean we have to go through antimicrobial protocols. Um, you know, lots of us have infection that go un. I don't diagnose, and I'm saying this, they go undiagnosed. I don't diagnose them. I'm a nutritionist, I'm not a medical doctor. Um, but I can run the labs that help me see the body. You know, labs to me are the body talking to us, which is the coolest thing, right? It's the body on a piece of paper telling me and telling my client what in the world is going on. And then from there, what's the next direction that we need to go? And that direction could be another set of labs. It could be these are the foods to eat or these are the foods that we take out. It could be these are the, this is the, uh, you need to get more sleep or you need to reduce your stress or, you know, you name it. You know, when it comes to, to working with clients, it's not just about nutrition. When it comes to the functional of uh, functional medicine, functional nutrition, um, even, even the holistic medicine and nutrition, uh, you know, a little interchangeable maybe, but it is, it's addressing all parts and all pieces to the best of our ability, building a team that's gonna help you get to where you wanna be. So this is a communicative, uh, uh, all hands on board situation to get, to get each person where they need to go. And that is what is so beautiful about this place in, in, in in medicine and nutrition is that it's not it's not a there's, there's no blinders you know we try not to have blinders anyway we're often in conventional medicine not that this is a bad thing in some cases but we have where there are blinders and so we're addressing one thing without understanding or caring maybe about the downstream effects we know that the body is a a, a holistic uh, holistic machine that all works together you know the heart if we whatever we're taking for cardiovascular disease 
if it's a statin, it's going to affect other things, but what's it going to affect? And then are we going to have to take something else to mitigate the effects of that? And then something else to mitigate the effects of that? When all we're doing is taking, we are, we're covering up symptoms instead of addressing the root cause when it comes to the, that kind of um, treatment of a body. And so that's not the goal, you know, and even, you know, I say this a lot, but even with supplements, supplements can be uh, a situation where you are just covering up symptoms. And so I love supplements, right? I think that they're important. I think that they're therapeutic, but I also, my goal is not to have them uh, on board long term. It's to have them as, as, um, as a therapeutic management of a situation and to replete nutrients when, when necessary and then get the body to where it needs to be so it's healthy and is functioning on its own. So drugs can be important for certain situations. I think they're way overused. I also think that supplements are way overused, um, but supplements are also important uh, therapeutically to allow the body to get where it needs to be. And so when we're looking at fertility and allowing the body to properly detoxify, you know, there are um, what we call endocrine disruptors in our environment and in our food. And so it goes back to these toxicants, it goes back to the pesticides, the herbicides, the, um, the, the chemicals and the preservatives that are in our, our body care products. Um, the things that we smell, right, when we're washing our clothes. Um, and our sheets and we go to bed or put our clothes on and we smell these things all day long or what we plug into the outlet to make the house smell good that holy smokes is so strong I just can't even stand it when I when I'm in a place that has these these so these smells that are so overwhelming and 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 part of it is mental too because I know it's so toxic that it makes me crazy to smell <laughs> I'm just like get it out of the wall um but these are things that affect our endocrine system. Um, and what that means is they are, they're estrogen mim mimickers, or you can call them xenoestrogens or metalloestrogens. And so we have estrogen, men and women, kids, we have estrogen receptor sites all over our body. And so these, 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 um, these estrogen mimickers bind to our estrogen receptors so, so tight, so much more tightly than what our natural estrogen does, and it doesn't want to let go. And so we have all of this excess estrogen running around in the body, and so that creates this massive hormonal disruption for women. Yes, it can increase our, our you know, our PMS symptoms. It can make our, our cycles really, really terrible. It can create, you know, lots of anger and rage and these are things that that are really uncontrollable hard to imagine maybe but but fact I've seen it I've, I've experienced it in my clients it is a really hard situation when things are just so uncontrollable because hormones are so messed up and so even situations where um, you know women are in so much pain they have to go to the emergency department because um, the pain is so severe and all and this is a monthly occurrence. It's heartbreaking and it's terrible um, But we can get away from that um, men who uh, you know if they're 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 Excess um, excess belly fat right adipose tissue in the, in the belly that creates even more estrogen We have this situation where so many men we have these testosterone clinics that are popping up all over the place and we've got men going, my testosterone's low, why is my testosterone low? Well, are we testing for estrogen? We should be, some are, some aren't, we need to be. What happens with men when we have, and it's not always because of the you know, excessive adipose or belly fat you know, around the organs, which is very dangerous, but uh, a lot of times it is, but it creates more estrogen and then there is an enzyme called aromatase that then will take testosterone and aromatize it or convert it to estrogen. So you have these men who are on excess testosterone because we have men who are so low in testosterone, which is a huge, huge problem. And then we're putting them on more testosterone, which all it's doing then is converting to estrogen. 
and it's not working and it's creating more of a problem and it's creating more more fatigue and more uh, lack of desire for sex and more depression. It's another nasty cycle that we're dealing with and of course it's going to interfere with fertility. Whether it's interfering because there's you know the lack of desire for sex or whether it's because of the fatigue or whether it's affecting the sperm and sperm production itself. So so important to understand that that all of these things that I'm talking about that I get so excited about but are really kind of scary <laughs> um, they we have this amazing amount of control to mitigate the toxic effects of these these uh, these endocrine disruptors um, we can Except for what we're breathing in the air, like outside, we really can't have a lot of control over that, unfortunately. Um, but we can have control over what's inside of our home. Uh, we can have control over what we're putting in our in our gardens. Um, and you know, another thing to think about when it comes to these toxicants that we put in our in our homes is when we do have kids who are walking on the floor, or crawling on the floor, or scooting across the floor. They're right at the level of these, these chemical toxicants that we're cleaning our homes with. The, the, the bleach, these, these crazy antimicrobials that are so full of toxins that are gonna, you know, if it's gonna kill microbes, imagine what it's doing to your microbiome, right? It's killing microbes. You have, micro, you have uh, uh, bugs on your skin, you have oral microbiome, uh, we have our vaginal microbiome. Uh, and all of these are so important to our, our, our health, our immune system, our mental and our emotional health. It's important to kids' immune system. It's important to everything that they do. Think about your animals, too. Your animals are, are also, they're on the floor. They're walking on it. They are at nose level, as are your kids, with the outlets where the, you have the, the, the little smelly outlet things, you know, the fresheners. <laughs> The most amazing thing to me, another side note, is how we have been duped into buying these chemicals and, sorry, down here, to buying these chemicals that make us sick and then we have to have medicine and drugs to make us better, which doesn't make us better. But it's amazing. Marketing works. And it's amazing, and it can be a good thing. I use it all the time, I have to. Um, but it also can be really damaging when it's not about you, it's about the money that it brings in. And it's just the way that it is. And, and this is where um, I think it's so important to, to have the knowledge, to have the discernment, to have the understanding, to have the, 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 the willingness to Maybe sometimes it's not, you know, it's taking away some of the conveniences. I don't know. It kind of depends on how far you want to go with it, right? Um, but, but all of these things are playing a role in our health, in our kids' health, in our pets' health, and in, our, and in the health of our future generations. Um, so... Goodness gracious, uh, what else do I want to cover here? There's so much. We have only about five minutes. I think that what I want to do, uh, we do end a little bit early today. Um, I think I want to, I want to talk a little bit about my goal with conscious conception um, and the fact that you know this this obviously conscious conception itself is not for everyone. It's for those who are looking to have families, whether it's ten years or today, right? Um, but you know people, and you know you have your own. If you're if you're at my age, you have your kids who are probably in that place, which is crazy to say. I have um I have cousins and friends who are now grandparents. I'm like holy smokes, I could be a grandparent. Um, <laughs> it's, it's kind of amazing to me. But um you know knowing people and and what I hope and what I hope with this show, and everything that I do, right? I mean, this is a love for me, but it's a love because I think that we have so much power and so much impact on each other, on, on, on creating our own health, on educating each other, on learn, again, on learning and growing and expanding. And um, I, 
showing future generations what it's like to be healthy. Um, and we're not seeing a lot of that. And but I do think though that we are we are seeing a pretty amazing tide of change. You know, when it comes to now, um, you know, I, I'm trained in part by the Institute for Functional Medicine. And one of my favorite things as, you know, as I go through these conferences and these modules with, uh, you know, the, the functional medicine doctors and doctors who are coming from doctors and PAs and MPs and, you know, all these people who are coming from conventional over to functional is the understanding and the knowledge and the openness to realize that there's more. There's more to just giving drugs. There's more to um, just giving, um, uh, just saying, oh, <laughs> this is the, I hate this. Somebody needs to lose a little bit of weight and they say, okay, eat less, exercise more. It's a joke. I mean, for some people that might actually be the key, but so often there, there are, you know, hormonal imbalances that are creating problems and these are the things that we need to, to uncover. We gotta uncover what's going on. Um, and it's not always easy, but it is key to, to creating that healthy body and that healthy future. And so with this, this, um, this movement, you know, this functional medicine movement, this functional nutrition movement, this root cause movement, this foundational health movement um, is, is key to, to, to switching from this place, you know, over the last hundred years where we're just getting sicker and sicker and sicker and sicker to a place where we start to grow and understand, take accountability for our health, take accountability for our family's health and move into a place of, of, of being knowledgeable and understanding. And what is amazing about it too is now we're also bringing in to this world genetics and epigenetics which is then bringing on true individualized nutrition and medicine. Nutrigenomics is, is an amazing key and helpful, potentially helpful piece to understanding a body, but understanding that epigenetics is also only potential. It's only your potential, it's not who you are. It's not everything else that comes in. So everything, it, although you may have the potential for something, all of the other things that we do on a daily basis are the things that actually matter, right? So um, if you have any questions about soulful conception, if you have any questions about anything, <laughs> I mean anything, I hope that you reach out. I hope that you, you know, if you if you follow me on Facebook or any of the places, whatever, you know, send me questions. You know, I love talking about this stuff. Truly, my role in this world is to be a resource. My role in this world is to is to empower people the best that I can with the knowledge of, of the things that I know, because I just keep learning and keep keep you know, keep trying to know more and more as much as I can. Um, and that's, that's, that's why people have specialties, right? Because you have your, your world that you just want to dig into. And that's where I am. And I want to, I want to serve. I want to be a resource. I want to give guidance. And I want there to be lots and lots and lots of healthy babies. So important. We've got to find, we've got to keep having these healthy babies. Um, and it starts with us. So um, you can find me, as always, tastelikenutrition.com. Um, you can find me on all of the social media, Taste Like Nutrition. Um, and let's see what else. So on the website, you can go, there is a button you can push where you fill out a free assessment. Um, and that assessment, it's, 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 a, it's really focused and kind of gives me an, an idea of what might be going on with, with whomever it is that's filling it out. Um, it helps give me guidance as to what we can do, uh, whether it, it's through me or if, if I need to refer, but we talk about it. I reach out to you personally, we talk about it. Um, we talk about whatever's going on and then we go from there and see what we need to do. 
Um, of course, if you have questions about soulful conception or you, you want to talk about soulful conception, you can still fill out the form. You can just reach out to me personally. You can go to the website. There's a form just to fill out who you are, and I'll reach out to you then. Lots of ways to get in touch, lots of ways to ask questions, lots of ways for, uh, for, 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 you know, allowing me to be of service is really all I, you know, all I'm trying to say with that. Um, so I hope that you all will have a wonderful day. Um, I hope that you all really take into consideration the power that you have, each of you have as an individual it's truly amazing the power that you have. I think one last thing that I want to say, so many things just come up, but one last thing is so often I find that when, when, when clients come to me who are very, very sick, and maybe even who are not sick, but are just frustrated, so often the power has, they feel like the power has been taking, taken away from them because they don't understand, they don't know what, you know, why their body's fighting back, they don't know what's going on or why they can't get pregnant or whatever is going on, and you start to feel powerless. And it goes back to my goal is to empower each person who I interact with, client or not, to, to understand that they have the power, that you have the power. You have the power to be this amazing creator in your health, and in your life and in your future and in your family's future family's future so take it take it for what it is love it um i hope that uh you'll reach out if you have any questions for me and every week we're here 10 a.m mountain time on kuhs streaming live we're on the faith taste life nutrition facebook page we're streaming live when we can on you know instagram of course and on the personal my personal page and then we turn into the, the taste life nutrition podcast where you'll find us where you find your favorite podcast so thank you again i hope you all have a wonderful weekend and we'll see you next week back here uh 10 a.m mountain time bye everybody